I have a slide from a few videos ago where we talked about the signaling process. So this is signaling. We are creating a signaling server that will be a go-between so that our two clients can find each other and they can exchange information. The find part is going to be the IP address or the ICE candidate, and the exchange info is going to be the SDP. In this video, we are going to work on this client getting these two things. We're not going to send it, and we're not going to worry about the other client yet. We just want to see what these are, and then and then we will proceed from there. So back over to scripts.js, we have our call, and inside of call, we get the user media, we load up the stream, and then we sit there. Okay. First thing, I want to overwrite local stream with the stream itself. Okay. You could actually do that up here. Uh, I already defined it there, so I'll, I'll just do it like this. But our, our global variable, so to speak, local stream, will be equal to whatever the user just pulled back from get user media. Okay. Once that is finished, we are going to make a new function called, and I'm going to do await create peer connection, open close. Okay. Now, this thing's job is going to be to set up this so that we can interact with it. Both clients will need this. So this is where we're already going to start getting into a little bit of confusion. Just want to make sure that it's clear. This computer is going to need its own peer connection, naturally. And so is this one. The confusing part is that they're both going to be running this same file, scripts.js. So you're just going to have to do your, be do your best to try and keep it, uh, keep it clear. Okay, so we're going to call create peer connection. And the reason we're doing that is because both computers will need this. So we'll do const create peer connection. We're not bringing anything in. And in here, we will do peer connection equals new RTC peer connection open close. Hop over to the docs. We looked at this page briefly already, but the RTC peer connection interface interface, right? This is sort of a super object. It represents a WebRTC connection between the local computer and a remote peer. Again, this is the heart of WebRTC, uh, at least the, the connection part. Gives us a, a bunch of methods to connect, to maintain, and monitor the connections. We scroll down a little bit to the constructor here. I'm going to click on that. The constructor returns a newly created RTC peer connection, which represents the connection. What can we pass it? Well, I, I, I mentioned this uh, in the whiteboarding video but we're going to send it a configuration object. The configuration object, we're gonna, we're gonna skip past all of this stuff and we're going to send some ICE servers, okay? We talked a little bit about that already. I'm gonna open this one up, but ICE servers needs to be an array of ICE server objects. Each one describes a server that can be used as an ICE agent. These are typically stun or turn servers, so we're already at a confusing part. <laughs> this is an ICE agent, the ICE agent is going to be a stun or turn server. What is a stun or turn server? These things can figure out how to get to this browser. Are you in front of a NAT? Are you in front of a router, a firewall, whatever? It will generate an ICE candidate so that the other computer knows, hey, the stun server said you can get to that browser through this path, okay? If we look at uh, an RTC ICE server, it is a dictionary and it defines how to connect to a single ICE server. There is a bunch of credentialing here. The only thing that we are going to care about is a URL because ours don't have any authentication. So briefly back to our image here, we need to be able to find each other. In order to do that, ICE candidates are just that. This is how you can find the other computer. To get the ICE candidate, we need to go to the stun server and if you come back to the starter files for this uh, for this section, signaling peer connection, there is a file called stunservers.js, and this you just need to copy. We're not gonna we're not gonna make a, a separate file for this. We're gonna come back over to our code base, and I am going to drop this in uh, at the top underneath peer connection. So I'm just gonna paste it. All right. So we've got peer configuration. Back over to the docs here. Back at the top. We are sending, or we're going to send this configuration to our RTC peer connection. That's what this object is. We are going to give it the ICE servers property. Scroll down a little bit. That's what we just looked at right here. We're going to send it this property. That is an object which has URLs. 
Come back over to the docs one more time here. That's this part, okay? This is what we are going to send. Hey, I've got some stun servers for you, so when the time comes, when you're ready to start figuring out how to get to me, go ask stun.l.google.com at port 19302, and then as a second option, stun1.l.google, etc. Okay? These are free. If you want to, you can go find some other stun servers out on the web, but we're going to take this peer configuration down below, and we're going to pass it to our RTC peer connection. Alrighty, so let's make some comments here. RTC peer connection is the thing that creates the connection. We can pass a config object, and that config object can contain stun servers, which will fetch us ICE candidates. One more time back to this page, this, uh, this WebRTC protocols. ICE is Interactive Connectivity Establishment. And there are lots of reasons why we can't make a direct connection, bypass firewalls, go through NAT, etc. ICE uses stunner turn servers to accomplish this. That is what we are sending over here. Hey, here are some ICE agents. Specifically, here are some stun servers. I need you to figure out a path so that somebody else can get to me. We're going to go down to the next line and we're going to target that peer connection and we're going to add an event listener. So coming back over to the docs for our RTC peer connection, we scroll all the way down to the event section. There is an ICE candidate event. The ICE candidate event is sent to RTC peer connection, right? We're going to listen for that. When a candidate has been identified and added to the local peer by this thing. So we need to do this before this is going to work. But before we worry about that, Let's go ahead and add our, add our listener. So it's going to look just like this. We've got peer connection, add event listener, what listener. We want the ICE candidate listener. When that happens, we're going to run some code. Let's put in here console.log. We'll put a bunch of, uh, I don't know, let's put a, some periods, ICE candidate found. And then right below that, let's console.log E and see what we get. Okay, now, now we're eventually going to send this ICE candidate up to the, other, to the other browser. That's what the signaling part is. The server, which we don't have yet, is going to be listening for this browser. Hey, I got an ICE candidate, right? I went out to the stun servers. I got an ICE candidate. I'm sending it over. Here you go. And then it's going to turn around and send it to the other computer. Right now, we just want to see it. Okay, how do we see it? Well, as soon as this happens, we are going to resolve. So our promise will be finished. We've created the peer connection. This actually returns a promise, so we're going to put a wait in there to, to, get that, to get that going, and we will need to make our promise async. So please do that. Make sure this is async. Put a wait in front of this peer connection. Come back up here. So this is finished. Let's put that in here. Peer connection is all set with our stun servers sent over. Now we are ready to do what's called create an offer. So I'm gonna put create offer time. We come back over to the docs uh, and we're still on RTC peer connection. Uh, I'm gonna go back a page actually. We come down to a methods. There is a create offer method. So it's this guy right here. I'm gonna click on that. The create offer method initiates the creation of an SDP offer for the purpose of starting a new WebRTC connection to a remote peer. Hopefully SDP looks familiar. That's what this part is. The SDP is the exchanging info. We looked at that over on our, on our protocols page. Let me click on SDP. It is a standard for describing the multimedia content, the connection, such as resolution formats, codecs, blah, 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 so that both peers can understand the data that's being transferred, okay? That is what create offer is going to do. It is going to create an SDP on this side. We're not ready to send it yet, right? We've got the ICE candidates that we're ready to get, and we're ready to create our SDP. In order to do that, we call create offer. We can add options if we want. We don't need any options. So let's come back over, and we're going to put a try around this, and we'll have a catch with an error just in case something goes wrong. All right, inside of our try, let's console.log, 
creating offer. Okay, I'm just trying to create a paper trail here or a, a trail of logs. You don't have to put these in, but I think they will be very helpful because, again, so many different things are going to be happening uh, all at once. We'll make a constant called offer, and we're going to call await peer connection dot create offer open close. When that's done, let's console.log the offer like so. Let's come back over, refresh, and see if we get some magic here. So call, it should pop up down below line 37. So that is our offer. Open that up, right? We got creating offer, open this up. There is the STP, right? It type is offer, so you can remember that because it is gonna be important. We're gonna have a type of answer. But the STP, I will copy it and paste it in over here. And I don't know what you were expecting, but I am disappointed. <laughs> uh, I can't read any of this, but I was expecting codec information, resolution, I don't know, something. And there is a very good reason for that. And I, I kind of set us up here. Uh, I definitely set us up. When we call create offer up here, right? That's the thing that's generating this, this SDP, which is supposed to describe our media so that the other, the other browser can understand it. We call it against peer connection. Well, the only thing down here that we ever do with our peer connection is we send it to stun servers. We never associate our data stream, which up here, we, we built it on line 23. We called get user media, and then we, we overwrote local stream. We never actually add that to our peer connection. So we come back over to the docs up above create offer here. There is an add track method, and this adds a new media track to the set of tracks, which will be transmitted to the other peer. That's what we need to do so that when we call create offer and eventually create answer, the SDP will actually have something to draw from a codec that actually that actually matters. And it says here adding a track to the connection will trigger renegotiation. Why? Well, because we need to exchange info so the other browser knows what we're talking about. If you add a new track, it might be something that the other browser doesn't understand. So this will need to happen again, right? The SDP and all that will need to, to be recreated. So we're going to call add track. We give it the track as well as the stream we want to associate it with. So right here, if you want to pause me for a second, you can think about what is a way to loop through all of our local stream tracks. As a quick reminder, get user media pulls back a media stream which contains media stream tracks. The answer is get tracks, open close, and then we'll call for each, call the one we're on track, and then we'll run pure connection dot add track, hand it the track, and then we will hand it local stream. Okay, that will be enough to associate our stream, which again, we, we overwrote local stream here, with our peer connection so that when we call create offer, it can actually check the data stream to find out what information the other browser will need to know. So I'm going to save that. Let's do a quick refresh here. Let's call. The STP should be much, much nastier this time. Open it up. Okay, it looks like we got a win. I will paste it in again. Yeah, much, much worse. <laughs> a lot more, a lot more information here for the other side to make, uh, to make use of. Okay. In the next video, we're going to take a look at this RTC uh, session description. That's what, uh, that's the type of object we're actually getting back. I will see you there.